this edition of The American Veteran. We'll show you how veterans are receiving support through the court process. Visit Foxhole Cafe, an eatery staffed by formerly homeless veterans. And from drill instructor to professional fitness trainer, how the GI Bill is helping this veteran achieve her dream. Then how an emergency housing assistance program is providing homeless veterans with shelter. Welcome to the American Veteran. I'm Jonathan Kopanger, a Navy veteran. And joining me is our active duty host, MC1 Jen Blake. Welcome, Jen, and thank you for your service. Thank you, Jonathan. It's a pleasure to be here, and thank you for yours as well. When veteran Lyndon Vallone turned to drugs trying to cope with civilian life, it eventually landed him in a courtroom in front of a judge. It was VA's Veteran Justice Outreach Program that was there to support and guide him through the court system. Many returning veterans are becoming casualties of a different kind. After proudly defending their country, these troubled vets are facing a new battle, defending themselves right. in court. As I got out of the Marine Corps, I thought I had, had everything kind of under control. I then had trouble readjusting into civilian life as my friends told me that Lyndon wasn't the same since the war started and I really didn't know what that meant at the time. After the loss of many of his friends and fellow Marines to homelessness, addiction and suicide, Lyndon's depression drove him to a place he never imagined. My lowest point was probably about in 2012 of July when I had cut everybody out of my life and things weren't going so well. I was involved with experimenting with drugs. I had gotten pulled over and arrested for uh, numerous drug charges and uh, numerous misdemeanors. Fortunately, through the VA's Veterans Justice Outreach Program, he got the support that saved his life. I went through the public court system for a little bit until I gathered up the strength to reach out to the VA. And as soon as I met Vincent, I knew right away that he actually cared as a Veterans Justice Outreach Specialist, or VJO for short, Vincent is responsible for direct outreach, assessment, and case management of vets in local courts and jails. So when we're encountering a justice-involved veteran, it's going to be very different than you may um, encounter somebody else in the justice system. And I think this is where Justice for Vets and Veterans Justice Outreach Specialists will come into play. Vincent gave me the perspective that I have now within the veteran court that I did not have before I came into it. He let me know what it was about and Vincent was my liaison between the public court system and the veteran court, letting, letting me know if it was right for me. I think it's important for, for veterans to know that there's people out there who are understanding their situation. You can reach out to somebody and they can guide you through this process. That's gonna be the hardest step. There's no way around that. That's gonna be the hardest step. VJOs also work as community liaisons, organizing a network of justice professionals. In addition, they provide training so local law enforcement can recognize and understand the unique issues of troubled veterans. We form these community partnerships with law enforcement and with corrections so that we don't see these veterans on the brink, that we can pull them back and provide a successful outcome for them. Designed to avoid unnecessary criminalization and incarceration of veterans, the VJO program works collaboratively with veterans treatment courts. These specialty courts address the unique issues of veterans providing low-level offenders the opportunity for treatment rather than incarceration. Good. How long have you been sober now? Uh, since March. That is absolutely An essential part of the success of Veterans Treatment Court is the veteran mentor. Ray Mellons is a fellow Marine and Vietnam veteran. Having Ray as my mentor really brings me back to having that good platoon sergeant that you can, t that you can trust. That good platoon sergeant that you can trust that will have your back no matter what you get into, as long as you're upfront and honest with him, he'll have the right advice for you. I find it very re rewarding to help these guys today. I mean, when we first see them come into court, what they look like, how they act, when they're 
got the drug problems or alcohol problems. And then you see them again in two or three months, standing before the judge when they're on the road to recovery. What a difference. It's like when we're in the service again, we can stick our chest out with pride. We, we accomplished a mission again. No, it makes us feel really good. Um, veterans bring a unique set of values um, and traditions to the table. We have an advantage with them working with this population. Um, something can be activated, this, this sense of pride, the sense of ownership, um, the sense of discipline. And in the right circumstances with all these different pillars, um, we can really ensure success of the veteran. The VJO initiative is preventing the downward spiral to homelessness for many veterans by ensuring that justice-involved vets receive the services and benefits they've earned. Veterans like Lyndon Vallone are finding the happiness and success they deserve. There is much more to the Foxhole Cafe than meets the eye. Located at the VA Medical Center in Lyons, New Jersey, this on-campus eatery is managed and staffed by formerly homeless veterans. It's 7.30 a.m. at Lions VA in New Jersey. Inside, Fred O'Weiler opens the Foxhole Cafe in anticipation of the lunch crowd. There's nothing better than going to work every single day loving what you do. Fred, a formerly homeless veteran, has changed his life with the help of the domiciliary and vocational rehab at the Lions campus. We offer the, the element of vocational and educational therapy to veterans, uh, and that's in combination with the other treatments that they're getting here. We see people that are newly back from Iraq and Afghanistan. We also see a lot of vets that have been stateside for maybe 20 or 30 years, and there's no reason why we can't have a chance to get to hear what they like to do, and there's no reason why they can't fulfill those opportunities. I came here and I was um, in bad shape. Uh, drug and alcohol abuse, years of it, a lifetime of it. And um, I finally had made a decision that I wanted to change my life and live differently. I came to the domiciliary and went through their program. I wouldn't be standing here or maybe not standing at all if it wasn't for what the VA has done for me. The domiciliary is a homeless program for veterans. But what sets this domiciliary apart from others is their vocational program called Maverick moving American veterans into employment and residences in the community. What it really is, is an opportunity for the VA to partnership with a nonprofit and create businesses. We have three different businesses here in New Jersey. We have a greenhouse, a horticulture program. We have a driving range where we supply golf balls to the local public and opportunities for them to utilize our, our services. And we also have the Foxhole Cafe. And it's the Foxhole that gave Fred a new start. I was uh, in the domiciliary, uh, part of the homeless program, and um, wondering what I was going to do with the rest of my life. And there was a, a posting for a cook to work here. So I went ahead and put in the uh, application because I always like to cook, and I bake pretty good. So um, I went ahead and put in the application, and we had an interview. And he gave me the keys and said, make it happen. The timing was perfect. I would go to school, and I'd come back here in the evenings and work on this place and, and so forth. And a week after I graduated from culinary school, at the top of my class, mind you, um, we were given permission to open. 487, please. There you go. It's been eight years since Fred opened Foxhole, and both he and the business are thriving. To help this progression, Lions VA partnered with MTI Integrated Business Development to help veterans in the domiciliary program succeed. We were brought in to assist in providing uh, restorative services to the veteran, and additional to, to develop the businesses that are here on the campus of the VA. So what are we cooking today? Uh, we got a pork butt on here. To add to Foxhole's success, Wendell helped Fred expand Foxhole 2 on the campus golf range, where a new specialty, smoked meats, is served. We've got the spray bottle with the apple juice. We have to smoke probably four times a week because of the success of the smoked meat. 
with these businesses, what it allows us to do is have the community support the veterans and the veterans support the community. It's a beautiful thing and it's changing lives. It gives them money for the housing they need. It gives them the opportunity, the hope, the confidence. I'm just thrilled to be a part of this. I put myself in the VA's hands and they, and they took care of me. Veterans eligible for education benefits under the post 9-11 GI Bill can use that assistance to train for a career in a surprising variety of occupations. Recently, we met an Army veteran who is using her GI Bill benefit to launch a career in the fitness industry. Turns out, that's not at all unusual. Nice, yep, right on that chest and straight up. Army veteran Saray Stewart decided to make fitness training her second career while still serving on active duty in the 1980s. That was good. How'd that feel for you? Oh, that was pretty so good. So I've known for a long time that the transition from being a drill sergeant and training soldiers to being a personal trainer or a group instructor and training regular people was very viable. Once she determined her career choice, Saray set her sights on achieving professional certification. Well, our goal is to learn everything you want to know about how the heart works. Today, she is using her GI Bill benefits to finance attendance at the National Personal Training Institute, a fitness academy with dozens of instructional sites across the U.S., including this one outside Washington, D.C. About 20% of the students here are veterans like Saray. They're not the majority of our students, but they're a very significant minority. Tim Henriquez, a nationally ranked power lifter, is director and lead instructor here. Personally, I think it's a fantastic fit. Veterans usually uh, have, a, have an affinity for fitness. They have to exercise a lot. Um, they often tend to like to kind of be a little more in control of their own destiny. All of which describes Saray, who credits her military service with preparing her for the new career that she'll be taking on. The best thing about military service is, number one, you learn to be a go-getter to facilitate change. And because we make things happen, we help people achieve their goals. Saray must fulfill 600 hours of training, which includes 100 hours of shadowing an established professional trainer. In this case, Tim Bruffy. Saray's been, she's been great to have around. She's, she's jumped right in from the very first day. She helps out with our group classes Stretch and the hands, extra coaching. has definitely been a big added uh, bonus for Exhale. us. Saray is awesome. Yeah, she, she's a very unique individual. She's got a strong personality. She is one of the best guacamole. networkers that I've ever met. Kale with broccoli, which is garlic. She's flavor. also an accomplished babies, raw foods chef inside. and nutritionist. Competencies that will enhance like her value as a trainer. This is the second course that I've taken since I started using my post 9-11 GI Bill. I came to MPTI to get more anatomy and physiology so that I could be completely well-rounded in my personal training and my fitness career. Saray's instructor, Tim Henriquez, says many here will find work in gyms or with company-run wellness programs. Others take it even further. We have um, a lot of students go on to kind of do their own thing. And around here, I mean, personal training is booming. It's considered to be one of the top growing industries uh, in the next 10, 20 years. It's my specific school has an 83% employment rate within six months. Bianca Cuck served as a sergeant in the Marine Corps. She's also using her GI Bill benefits to obtain her certificate. To be able to use what I earned to further my education in order to go out there and help other people. Coming here, you get to work out every day, so I'm also keeping myself in shape while learning how to share that love of physical fitness with everyone else. So knowing that I can go out there and make a difference in the lives of not one person, but thousands of people, possibly, it makes me feel good. Bianca also has a word of advice for her fellow veterans about claiming their GI Bill benefit. Use it. You earned it. You went out there, you served your country daily, and this is what you're getting back from it. So use it. It's your education. Um, why not take advantage of it? Particularly if, like Saray, your military training has prepared you for another calling. Absolutely. I mean, we have an opportunity to change hearts, minds, and lives. Those are all core concepts of every branch of the military. So as a personal trainer, a person will let you know what their goals are. And you would help them tailor those goals exactly to what it is you can help them with. Step, hands down, relax, and bow. 
Tens of thousands of chronically homeless veterans are now finding reliable long-term shelter thanks to an emergency housing assistance program called HUDBASH. Born of a partnership between the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development and VA, HUDBASH provides housing vouchers to veterans in distress across the country. Army veteran John Brister has settled into a new apartment and a new life in Portland, Oregon after years of living on the streets. For a period of time for me, uh, it became a way of life. It was a lifestyle. But after a long, long period of time, uh, I realized I was getting stuck in that lifestyle and I didn't like it anymore. I didn't like the consequences anymore. It was starting to wear me out. Cool. Yeah. John's escape from that downward spiral I mean, came about a year ago no, after VA caseworker yeah. Adriana Clark really helped him secure yeah, the resources yeah. needed to get him yeah. off the streets right, right. and no, into an apartment. Yeah, we'll see you later. All right, bye. Okay. I uh, was uh, offered a HUD-VASH voucher, which uh, enabled me to find my own apartment and uh, seek a little stability. The voucher covered John's rent, but fell short of additional expenses he needed to cover. But his VA caseworker was able to help with those as well. Once I moved in my apartment, uh, it was unfurnished, and um, so I had a lot of help getting uh, uh, furnishings for my apartment th through her, her, her networking and contact. HUD VASH, the nation's largest program to house homeless veterans, involves a partnership between VA and the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD. VASH stands for Veterans Affairs Supportive Housing. VA's Mike Boyd, supervisor of Portland's HUD-VASH program, says networking with community partners has become an essential part of helping veterans meet ancillary expenses that HUD-VASH vouchers may not cover, things like security deposits and home furnishings. A lot of these vets don't have resources, don't have the financial means to even pay for that amount. It's a problem in many communities, but a particularly acute one in Portland, where a competitive housing market means that when suitable housing units become available, potential renters need to act quickly. Hello, how are you doing? Good. So what's really needed is some sort of flexibility Thanks. fund that we can access to help them compete with those other people that do have the financial resources to pay for an application fee. To meet that need, community partners, including the City of Portland, the United Way, and VA, all chipped in to establish such a fund. Additional local partners contributed in a variety of creative ways. One is an organization called JOIN, which serves the homeless population in Portland. They have, at their own expense, agreed to take the money that has been pooled, this flexible funds, and organize it, distribute it, manage it, so that we can call them on the same day and get a check cut and get that to a landlord all within a period of hours. And because JOIN is small, it's very easy for us to do that. So we were able to support the VASH workers by making those resources available to them quickly on a much quicker basis than they might have been able to working through another entity. The effect of that effort has been nothing short of remarkable. In Portland, we've grappled with ending homelessness for years, like many communities across the U.S. Uh, we've had uh, community-wide plans to end homelessness, and we've seen over the last several years a slight increase in homelessness, mostly um, in response to the national recession. The one area where we've seen a decrease in homelessness is among our veteran population. We saw a 10 percent decrease among our veterans. We're hoping that they're going to be able to replicate that throughout the, the country. And the idea is basically what Portland has done, and that is to get community members from uh, around a local area to come together and meet and develop relationships and basically become a united front for ending homelessness in their specific area. So it's a pretty exciting time for the VA. Portland's John Brister is just one of more than 300 veterans who are now in homes, putting their lives back together thanks to HUD Vash and a committed community of partners. Understanding the issues many veterans face returning to civilian life, one Marine veteran started a business that would not only offer veterans job opportunities with flexibility, but also a chance to work with people who share similar military backgrounds. As the sun comes up on a cold morning, these Marines are getting ready for a long, hard battle. But this battle isn't with the enemy. It's with lifting, hauling, and moving furniture. They are employees of Two Marines Moving, a company owned by a veteran who hires veterans. 
I mean, people know what they're getting when they hire us. You're going to have Marines, Army, Navy, Air Force showing up at your door that are, you know, yes ma'am, yes sir, that are going to be polite, you're going to be respectful, and they're going to move with a purpose. Nick Balcom, who served in the Marine Corps for six years, knew he wanted to own his own business. You know, I always got a lot of uh, phone calls and texts from friends and family, hey, can you come help me move? And, uh, and I was like, you know, I'm not going to do this for, uh, for beer and pizza anymore. <laughs> like, I can turn this into a business. So on November 10th, 2008, the Marine Corps' birthday, Two Marines Moving was born. Hi, Marisa. This is Joel with Two Marines Moving. I just Valcom understood the problems people. veterans had with finding jobs when returning to civilian life. He also knew many were going to school, so he started recruiting and offering a flexible schedule. Good morning, Kevin. This is Anthony with Two Marines Moving. Anthony Santos' post-military plans were to earn a degree in fitness and nutrition, but he still needed a job. He learned about the company through the Marine Corps during his transitioning time. Leaving the Marine Corps without a plan is more scarier than anything, um, which is something when I decided to leave the Marine Corps, I refused to leave without having something in mind. After leaving the military, Colby Foster was unemployed for 18 months. Then he got a call from two Marines moving. There's a huge drive to hire veterans everywhere, but if you're, I was in the infantry and the, the infantry skill set just doesn't translate, but uh, to this job it does. For him, moving is very much like a mission in the military. It's a little bit like leading people in combat, leading people in moves, because there's always something unexpected that crops up that you got to deal with right away. The job is now allowing him to pursue a degree in government and international politics, but Balcom says the jobs are not a handout. This isn't charity work that we're doing. I hire them because it makes great business sense. Uh, my veterans will stay late to ensure the task is completed. They're not afraid to take charge, you know, take command, get the job done. We'll leave that right, right up here. Okay. An attitude that customers appreciate. They all snap to right away getting the different parts of the job done and a quality job. Even when things get a little tough. I was the logistics chief in the Marines. And uh, what it taught me is like just always think off the cuff and just come up with new ideas. If you try it once, two, three times, as I was a fourth time, eventually get it done. The military bond between brothers is also still upheld on the job, starting from the top to employee. When you get a long, hard day and everybody's down, um, you, you all basically come from the same background, you know, whether you're Marine Corps, Army, Navy, Air Force, you know, you all have that similarity of, I serve for my country. My employees and I have, have shared background and shared history. In the military, you have some of the best times yeah. of your life, and there's also some, some challenging moments that come with being deployed. Um, I, I've been diagnosed with PTSD myself, so when I have someone that comes to me with yeah. an issue, I can actually relate to them. Relating has helped the company to grow 300% in three years. So what is the future for the company and the men that serve it? I'm a Marine. I want to conquer the world. And I see lots of opportunities for the future of two Marines moving, uh, both with corporate-owned locations across the country and franchise-owned locations. That concludes this edition of The American Veteran. The Department of Veterans Affairs is honored to bring you this program. If you would like to get in touch with us or obtain more information about VA benefits and services, call us at 1-800-827-1000 or visit our website, va.gov. And if you're a veteran who's troubled in some way, please call the Veterans Crisis Line at 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255.